terrible idea. Can you ride a bike, Rosie? No! That is, it can be quite annoying to disabled people. Oh! Well, this disabled person is going to be quite annoying to sit in. Do you know who I am? This is why they have to make TV programmes to get folk to hang about with you. This is Mission Accessible. Cambridge is a hell of achievement. People come here and they do great things. So I fit in perfectly. <laughs> That's a dance move of success. It's actually story. It's me. Who's your favourite Cambridge alum? Hawking. I actually like when Stephen Hawking died <laughs> because it made me the most intelligent disabled person of them all. I think we need to, like, check. No, no, no I think we no. need to, like... It goes Stephen Hawking, me. <laughs> <laughs> I am from the west coast of Scotland, a.k.a. Glasgow. A oh, hundred times better than Cambridge. Like, you can get a rolling sausage for a pound fifty. Shall we meet Dextra? All right. Hi, Rosie. I'm Dextra. I'm 19 years old. I'm a fashion model and a philosophy student. Oh, I love them. I'm autistic and I have ADHD. Right. Me and my best friend, Maud, love going on city breaks, but sometimes it can be really tricky. Oh. We try and find green spaces so it's a bit more quiet, where we can sit down, uh, less like noises and traffic. We can do that. Sometimes sensory overload. Just love going out late at night. Like that's our favourite thing to do. That's your mission, rosy cheeks. Well, there yeah, we can do that. All of that in mind, Rosie. Yeah. You've brought me to a bin. Look, Alan Turing. One of the greatest code breakers in minds in British history. And I believe he had autism. Pretty much a hero. So I'm gonna be inspired and think about what my blue plaque will hold. I thought we were here to organise a city break for Dextra and Mod, not find your genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That as well. She's a high achiever at noise. Um, she's really good at loudness. If that was a, something she could get a wee blue plaque on a wall for, I'm sure there would just be hundreds of them if Rosie Jones deafened me with her squealing. It's a great idea! This is a terrible idea. Can you ride a bike, Rosie? No! Charlotte's... Yeah, Tandems lend out bicycles for disabled people. We're biking around Cornbury. Wow! Where are we, Rosie? I brought you to Britain's rainiest. Cemetery. This is why they have to make TV programmes to get folk to hang about with you. Do you reckon I deserve to be buried here amongst great people? No. It holds a lot of people who were 
proper clever. Francis Holmford. She was the granddaughter of Charles Darwin, an alumnus of Cambridge. I was going to tell you that. We are in a graveyard. How existential. So that's perfect for me and Mum. And we have found a philosopher for you, Wittgenstein. Oh, my God. He was really controversial at Cambridge when he did his thesis, Traticus. It was very, like, not well received. I told you all of that. <laughs> what was the piece of writing that people found controversial? Dexter just said it. You name it, because it's your specialist subject. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was about being scrapped. <laughs> I'm on the autism spectrum. Um, my dad also has autism, and it means I'm sensitive to things like light, and I'm very sensitive to sound. We're bloody here because Dextra does the light open space and places that are quiet. Perfect. I'm starting to think, what have I done? Like children, how when the war? And then I thought, come here, find a plant or whatever, and I will discover a new species. <laughs> I like the ambition. I think you're really unlikely to find a new species here because the whole point of the Botanic Garden is that we carefully collect and catalogue and look after the plants here. So we have a record of everything that's already here. I think if Rosie is to discover a new plant species, it's probably going to be in the underside of her bra. And it'll be moss. I'm sure you don't know every tree in it. Like, I've discovered that one. That is a pine tree. That's <laughs> Pinus nigra. <laughs> <laughs> Hayley, what's that? So that is a Jerusalem artichoke. And you can eat the roots and what they... What way has someone discovered it? Yep, and they've discovered it. Never mind, OK. Has that been discovered? Yep. Yellow flower! Yeah, you can tell, because there's a label in front of it. I never liked bloody labels. <laughs> I just think we need some proper thinking time. Here we go! This is like the most relaxing smear test ever. <laughs> this is so lovely. It's giving you thinking time. People knew who you were. They did. They said something about English football. I think they thought you were David Seaman. <laughs> Very similar energy. <laughs> Dextra and Maud are at their most iconic at night, unburdened by the noises of the city. That was 
a low blood sentence. The instate of a strong name do not for disabled people. What we usually talk about this telescope is that it almost discovered Neptune. It did, yes. I know. I mean, if it was you, I'm pretty sure that would never have happened. We had a planet to find out, find it. Neptune, I find it. Mm -hmm. Jupiter, I find it. You. <laughs> You rain it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I will find it. <laughs> These are the voyages of the starship Rosie. I've never seen that star before. It's an airplane. I think it's a new star. I'm 100% sure it's an airplane. I'm gonna ask Dr. Nina. <laughs> Leave that lady alone. That's in my moment. <laughs> Oh, 